Hello and welcome to uh, episode 411 of Sonic Talk, recording today, Wednesday the 15th of July in the summer. It's cooled down a bit, so it's not quite so uh, hideously hot. I seem to be slightly uh, wonky, my camera there. I might change that a bit later on. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I want to say thank you very much to all of those people in the chat room. Uh, we have a fulsome chat room, as I wa often want to say. There they all are. Uh, and in fact, I want to apologise for last week, because last week we, we sort of maxed out the server, the streaming server. So this week I've got a slightly new service which allows you to watch it all in multiple bit depth so you can adjust it to according to your connection and hopefully it auto scales so if we get inundated uh, and we continue to grow then it will be able to handle it and I don't need to worry about it anymore so it's all good. I want to say thank you very much to our sponsors Isotope uh, if you watch regularly you'll know that we set a competition last week uh, and we'll be announcing the winner of that and we'll also be bringing you their message from this week and the chance to win Isotope Trash two so do check that out um that will be coming up probably about halfway through so around 30 minutes time so anyway um if you've watched this for the first time if this is your first time looking um please do subscribe to us on youtube uh, subscribers are good and you'll get to see all of the good stuff coming up uh, we've just published the jdxa review part one i've got the dreadbox erebus uh, review which is coming up soon and that is a lovely little sounding synth and we've also got the modor nf1 and some of the boomstar modules and part two of the uh, uh jdxa review so tons of stuff coming up as well as sonic talk every week so anyway let's introduce our guests i'm going to go over to uh, Robbie Bronneman over there in Robot Studios where he uh, mans the controls for productions, soundtracks, so the mastermind behind uh, Howard Jones's technical setup where he goes on the road with him touring. I think you're probably off to the States sometime soon. How are you, Robbie? Very good, thanks. Yeah, very good indeed. Excellent. I'm glad to hear that. Last last time we spoke to you, you were a little less okay because you'd had a very stressful not arriving oh. at a gig. So, Oh, God, the, the 10 minutes before a gig scenario. Yeah, no, that, that thankfully is, is is just a thing of the past. I've now been I've now been told that I have to that, that we should all travel to gigs together from now on to to alleviate that problem. That sounds so, good. Well, in the helicopter, you'll need a Chinook, won't you? Yeah, helicopter. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, anyway, bed arrows or something. Yeah, I'm sure that gag is getting a bit old. But anyway, nice to have you, Robbie. Thanks for joining us. And also, we have another guest we haven't seen for a little while, Dave Spears, who's been holed up in his synth cave, which is the HQ of uh, G4 Software. In fact, uh, he was just uh, um, attending to some Simmons modules, which are the lovely SDS fives, I believe, that have been going in back into the rack. Why did you take them apart? Have you just got new? ones or what's going on uh, trying to make one work in one out of two one ah so you got more well, than one one's american power supply so i wanted it to be in the british but then when i put the modules in the british one some of the triggers weren't working so it's like i've just tested the american one that will work so now i'm taking them out the british one putting them in there which is and it's great because obviously you put your seven modules in until you get to the last one because you've got to make it locate ah and it doesn't quite fit. i did it i did it i was expecting to be swearing a lot but there you go oh yeah. look at that i love it there's something about it. it it really does look like rack test equipment there's something very special about that that the simmons sds5 you'll be pleased to know dave that i was uh using the sds8 uh when oh. we did the beat step review which uh, uh we connected it all up and triggered it it sounded lovely um so uh, the sds8 has actually had some some use so you'll be pleased to know that anyway dave spears g4 software makers of fine software instruments and many other things besides are you well i'm all right i had a holiday ah you Quite must be good actually when they had where i was there was a seafood disco a seafood disco. I pulled a muscle. Hey! <laughs> oh, I, was, I was waiting for the gag, and I'm glad it arrived. Thank you very much. Well, I'm glad to hear you had a holiday. I'll tell you what. No, I, I had a week away a few weeks ago, but I've been busy since. I so. really want a holiday. I'm ready for a holiday, and mine's not till the end of August, and it's only in Kent. So uh, I'm going to have to slip away, I think. Anyway, I won't stop moaning. I, well, I will stop moaning, and I'll introduce uh, Mark Tinley. I'm afraid he doesn't have a lower third. He was a, a late addition, so I wasn't ready for him. But he's welcome nonetheless. Mr. Tinley, of course, uh, sound artist uh, and uh, creative thinker and man with two guitars, one and a, and a red angle poise lamp mic holder. I am a man with two guitars. Um, I took one of those guitars to um, uh, to the... Backdoor Man Blues Jam in Glastonbury on <laughs> okay. Sunday night, um, which was quite interesting. And then I kind of wandered in with a guitar on my back and everyone kind of looked at me and I felt really paranoid. And I kind of thought I'd better go to the bar and buy a drink. So I did that. 
And then I said to someone, who do I, who do I speak to? So he, he kind of took me by the arm and pulled me through into the other room and pointed at the guy in the corner and said, that's the guy who, who will choose you to play. And then they finished kind of a round of um, jamming. And then, uh, and then he said, oh, that was such and such on guitar and that was such and such on guitar. And he said, and now we have uh, this guy on bass and this. And then he pointed to me and he said, what's your name? And I'm like, Mark. And he said, right, Mark on guitar. <laughs> that was it. Right in the deep end. I was up there like doing like, wow, you know, blues and everything. And then, then they, they did a round of kind of sax solos and everything. And then they went, Mark on guitar. And I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> wow. So I've been mean, talking about being thrown in the deep end, but uh, but it was good actually. I really enjoyed it. I've not. I don't think I've played live for. I I don't even remember when the last time I actually went out. Well, no, actually, no, that's not strictly true. I I have played live recently at the Glastonbury yeah. Fringe Festival, but I but not not in a pub with like a crowd and. And, and no you know, no kind of no briefing, just a kind of like yeah, one two yeah, three four go. Up there, yeah. Well, so I have I, to say, Mark, like uh, also, um, uh, we talked about Splice.com last week, and I thought, well, I'll try it out. So I started, I uploaded a bit of synth noodling, which uh, I shared with Mark, and Mark added yeah. some great guitars, and now we've got this kind of huge behemoth of what sounds like German, oh. Germanic space rock, um, and uh, we need someone to sort it out. So if anyone's interested in uh, joining the Splice um, organisation and, yeah, yeah, and yeah, getting yeah, yeah. invited, just get in touch with us and you can have a go at it. It needs Ableton Live 9. But it's actually quite a cool feature because I noticed what happened. Because what I did is I uploaded it all and then when I went home, I thought, oh, I wouldn't mind having a no-go at that. And I could just download it at home. So it's a bit like sort of Dropbox. It's actually quite cool in many ways. Anyway, I should introduce... Um, it syncs quite well, doesn't it? Doesn't it doesn't do badly. It, it got confused by one of my guitar lines at one point, but it all seems to be there again now, so... Yep. Well, anyway, um, so finally, but certainly not lastly, although in order, I suppose, of appearance, uh, Mr. Rich Hilton, keyboard player for Chic and Nile Rogers Studio Guy. How are you, Rich? Very well, thank you. Excellent. And uh, I, I, you've been having bandwidth problems. Have you now sorted all that out? Because we missed you last week. You just uh, you couldn't connect, I believe. And there was uh, so I hope that's all all sorted out. Well, it seems to be. Last, I'm going to have to look at the calendar. Where was I last week? <laughs> Where was I last Good week? God, last week I was on a plane to uh, to Ireland. That would explain it then. Oh no, I remember. I actually joined you at the very end. I had just arrived. In Ireland at the time is what that ah. was. Well, in, in, um, a, in a strange twist of fate, um, I'm actually streaming this stream to Ireland before it hops to the rest of the world and is redistributed. So we sort of passed in the ether somehow. Anyway, Rich, it's great nice to have you aboard as ever. Nice to be. Thank you. So um, I guess we should get on some topics. Um, oh, yeah, this was um, pretty well, I say interesting. I'm not going to use the word. Well, I have used the word interesting. This was something that you spotted, Dave. This is the uh, Kickstarter product. This is the uh, Doppler Labs um, here. I'll, put, I'll see if we can play a bit of this At video. Doppler Labs, we want to give you full control over how you hear the world. That's why we created here two digital buds and an app that allows you to personalize your live audio environment. We consider it here to be the first true hearable. Wearable technology designed specifically for your ears. The Doppler vision is to give the user control over their immersive environment. And we provide tools such that you can combine different features, different functionality to create a unique experience just for you. The main functions of here are a volume knob on the world, live EQ, and effects. It's essentially putting a studio in your ears so you can live curate the audio you hear. So you have the perfect audio experience for you. Well, without all of those kind of uh, dreadful uh, Kickstarter style type buzzwords, what's interesting? They this was essentially these are battery powered uh, buds that allow you that have DSP on board that allow you to actually change the way that the microphones on the outside of them respond. So you can, I think, you can use them for noise cancelling. You can use them for turning up the bass, down the bass, removing certain bits of audio. Uh, they recently did a Kickstarter where they did. Um, they ordered, they did 636k. So, and then they also just raised another 17 million dollars in Series B investment, whatever that means. Uh, Dave, used by this, it's a really interesting notion. This idea is a wearable technology, but b something in between you and the real world that you could modify. Can you think of any? Uh, what was it that caught your imagination? Money, money, the investment, <laughs> money that they had. I was like, whoa. So I, I, yeah. No, it's quite interesting actually. I thought, my first thought was, hang on, sorry, I've got to get one of these tiny little 
knob caps in the top of this knob at exactly the right position. In your own time. Swearing. Okay, sorry. Um, I thought, this is something I totally should have done. That was my first thought. My second thought was, how much? And my third thought was, I'd quite like a sort of, it would be really nice, you know, this idea of interfacing between you and the real world. So, like, I went into HMV the other day. It's the first time I'd been in there for a long time. I used to go in and like buy albums just because they look good and stuff like that. And I got to the counter and it was like, have you got a loyalty card? No. Would you like a loyalty card? No. Uh, because you're spending over £20, you can fill in, uh, you, can, you can buy one of these things on the counter for a further £5. And by this time I could feel like my blood pressure starting to raise because I didn't want Top Gear driving themes or any of those kind of CDs. <laughs> and I thought, wouldn't it be brilliant if you could have this kind of interface between you and this corporate nonsense that gets spouted at you in shops, where in your head or in your earbuds, it just kind of played really nice, happy music to calm you down and stop <laughs> you going mental. So there you go. So that was your approach. Oh, that's an interesting. But the notion of having this sort of real-time stuff, I mean, because we've all you know experienced, or some of us certainly, noise-cancelling headphones, and that's presumably has DSP in it, and that's adaptive at the same time and doing all those things. You know, this takes it a step further. I, I, I'm kind of, I like the the thought of it, but I perhaps the thought of it also is a little uncomfortable because it's yet. Another. I think it's going to be really unnatural. I think it, I mean, that's my fear. I like the idea, like people were saying, you could tune out the annoying dog from next door, or let's say you've got neighbours. I had this neighbour who just kind of played piano incessantly, and it was all like Rachmaninoff stuff and it sounded like the Keystone Cops. And I, so no matter what film I was watching, it could be this kind of really <laughs> melodramatic film. It sounded like... But if you could drown that out, that would be really, really cool. I wonder if that's possible. I, I don't know. Um, Robbie, what do you think? Could it have use? I mean, if you took it to its logical conclusion, you know, maybe it means that you could actually then use it for studio purposes, assuming you had it maybe on uh, closed-ear headphones where you could, you know, just bring your monitors with you that your your curve that you like listening to stuff with or something like that i mean sometimes you you sometimes particularly if you go mobile you have less than ideal situation don't you or or you're somewhere and you've got to have very noisy air conditioning on or fans or or even the fans sometimes from the gear in your studio particularly now with you know thunderbolt meaning you have to have all the paraphernalia in the room really unless you want to spend like 400 pounds on a special thunderbolt cable <laughs> So perhaps it would be good for all that kind of business. Yeah, you could spend kind of... four, less than 400 quid on these headphones. I know, Rich, yeah, what, do you, yeah. what, what, what do you think, Rich? I mean, because you're travelling a lot, you know, you, you often travel light, you, you take your in-ears with you, but, I mean, this sort of technology perhaps in connected to your in-ears, would, would that, can you see any merit to it? I can see merit to it, and this used to be in the realm of audionics, I believe it's called, which is basically repairing hearing for people who don't hear well enough. Um, as a sort of sunglasses analogy to viewing the world through some sort of device that's pasted over your one of your five senses, I'm somewhat appalled. But I guess there is a use... I guess some people are interested in this, and other than for corrective purposes. And also, let's... Um, well, you know, we're all talking about sirens and ambient noise and reducing the sound of the custom, the guy at the counter who's trying to sell you some stuff. And from what I can tell, everything above and beyond volume control, EQ, and artificially added ambience is a pipe dream away. There's no like real time isotope RX in this thing. It's no. an EQ. It's an EQ and a DSP, and it's uh, and a volume control. So what do they get all that money for? That... What do they Pardon? get all that money for? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> That's like magic. I don't know. I couldn't believe the price of the thing. Unlike one of the other things we're going to review earlier, uh, later. But um, I, I can't believe the price of the thing. It just sort of, it's an, uh, conceptually a weird thing to me. I mean, to wear sunglasses on a bright day doesn't bother me because I'm not compromising my vision and I'm not trying to evaluate, you know, paintings. But, you know, in terms of the color accuracy. But, but to put something over my ears to hear life no. <laughs> mm, it's a weird <laughs> idea, isn't it? But I, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, Mark, can you see? I, I guess if you could use those microphones uh, to perhaps record, possibly it might have some use. So you can record your environment as well. You know, I, I think it's perhaps not been 
Yeah, I don't know. Well, you could use those Roland binaural earphones, the Edirol ones, which have microphones yeah. in the outside of them and then earbuds on the inside of them, so you can actually hear your results as you're doing it. Um, this, is, this isn't a new idea. There was something... When I first bought an iPhone, there was an app that I downloaded called RJ DJ or Reality Jockey. And it took the, the Apple um, headset, which had just come out at the time, I think, maybe, with, which had buds, and then it has a microphone halfway down it, I think. And it takes sound from the microphone, processes it, plays it back in your ears. And it's like audio tripping. You, go, you, you set a DSP thing up on this app and i for some reason i've got it in my phone but for some reason i think it ceased to be compatible with ios and it's broken ah so you'd need an you'd need to have an older version of ios to make it work maybe um but it kind of you know can you remember in the h3000 there was that um the eventide oh God, what was it? yeah there was an event there was a patch which pitch shifted things in two different directions at once and uh and it kind of went so everything around everything that you fed into it kind of echoed off this rj dj thing had a patch in it that did the same thing so if you snapped your fingers you'd get this and echo is all changing pitch and stuff um and i tried wearing it for a while just to see <laughs> if i could have you know an interesting life uh, <laughs> experience of the world and it just drives you nuts yeah. because one of the things as a, a sound guy and so i think one of my my primary way of dealing with and sensing the world is through sound even when i'm driving i can't drive with the radio on and i like to hear whether things are alongside me or what's i listen to the engine and i listen to what's going on suddenly i was in this world where i was walking into things because i couldn't make rational judgments about the size of the space that i was in and all sorts i mean it was yeah, very well, very that, that is uh, so, I, so i think this would really mess with your it would mess with your senses i think but yeah, yeah go on, i think you're probably right i mean what uh, as was mentioned in the chat room thank you chatties uh, a fulsome chat room if i may say so and hopefully all enjoying the stream to the maximum they possibly can at the bit rate of their choice um <laughs> Lot you see lots of people. You certainly you know all of the recent footage from Glastonbury. You know there's just basically crowds of people all looking at their phones because they're filming the yeah. stuff. So you sort of experience things through a smaller lens, and it's a really strange kind of shifted reality. But there was something else I noticed recently that I can't remember the name of the camera, but it's got this ridiculous eighty times optical zoom. So you can actually sit there, look at something, and then zoom right, see things that you wouldn't be able to see with the naked eye, and have trouble with a telescope with as well. Optical zoom. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's, uh, so those, I suppose, you know, maybe this is a stage towards that. And there seems to be, judging by this Kickstarter campaign, I mean, they sold most of the, uh, they did, did 999 backers at the 179 reduced price. I think the full price is going to be 250 bucks for these things, are going to be out in December. So there is, there's a what, there's a need, well, not a need, a desire to experience this, but it's a very, I, I think maybe it, de it, what it will deliver will be less than it, it says. <laughs> Because there's got to be there's got to be latency, hasn't there? Really. I mean, if there's if from a positive standpoint, the first thing I thought of when I saw it was autism, because most of the autistic people I know who have sensory issues, um, I've recommended to them that they get those in ear, um, you know, the in ear monitors that we all use. But the uh, what are they called? Earplugs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've recommended that they get moulded earplugs because they make a massive difference to how much your information get bombarded. Right. So if you could actually have control over what things came in and what didn't, but I, I, it's, there's an element of King's New Clothes about it as well because you're not going to EQ out the world, are you? Um, no, I mean we're not unless you can phase reverse the neighbor's dog and nothing else or in dave's case the neighbor's piano and nothing else it's you know you'd have to have microphones on the source you'd have to get around and say see your neighbor and say look i know you'd like to practice the piano and everything but would you mind putting this microphone inside your piano so that i can uh, reverse the phase and tune it out of my um out of my earbuds it's <laughs> yeah i can see how that would be anyway i just thought it was uh, that was me thinking it was magic well, oh, there you sorry. go. Sorry, Dave. You've you've your bit reduced. Oh, sorry. And that was me thinking it was magic. Well, maybe it will be. Anyway, um, moving on. Uh, this was uh, another 
I, I like this. This is, uh, let's see if this is going to play. Yes, this is the Future Re- Retro Mondo Vox. This, Hi, this is Jared from Future Retro. Not the, not like the most um, snappy Retro presentation. Hard to make Mondo out the Vox details. Single rack space unit. It is a polyphonic MIDI processing unit that takes uh, polyphonic playing uh, over a MIDI channel of up to 16 notes and then intelligently uh, rearranges or routes those 16 notes onto their own MIDI channel in various ways depending on the modes here that we've got. Right, I won't play it all, but this this seems like such a simple idea. I mean, I'm sure this must be possible in kind of software, but essentially what it does, you take an incoming MIDI stream and you can route it out to up to 16 MIDI outputs. So you could uh, create these massive unisons, uh, detunes, all kinds of things. And there's some really cool uh, little nifty things. Here. Like One of the things is you can have, maybe every chat, say you had four voices playing in unison, you move the pitch bend up and it detunes them all by a certain amount. So it sets the, the, the pitch range between them over MIDI pitch bend and then fixes it. So you then have them all detuned and a variety of other things like for, for intelligent uh, chord playing. So you can create chords out of uh, monophonic um, uh, sources, but then always say that you want one particular module to play the lowest note on the keyboard. Just really kind of clever stuff. I don't know, if, Robbie, th- th- whether this uh, appealed to you, but it just seemed, you know, it, it, it seems remarkably simple that I, I can't believe nobody's done it before. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think, I think this will appeal to people, wouldn't they, who've got a, who've got a lot of, a lot of hardware and yeah. want to kind of harness it all in some sort of big monster kind of, you know, monster kind of synth way um but yeah it does seem like a quite a simple idea and like you you said it's probably it's probably some of that features some of that feature set is probably quite achievable through like a you know software and you know and a, a, an intelligent midi interface but yeah, yeah the, the the detuning stuff particularly is quite quite a nifty little thing i think yeah it's quite a long there, there's like i think it's like 20 minutes or so so you, it does go through all of the different modes uh, I, I don't know, um, Mark. I can see you know if you have you because you've as you said you've got quite a lot of obsolete hardware lying around. You could just have all this hooked up and create a monster, monster voice if you so desire. Might, might be useful for MIDI guitar, I suppose. I, I do quite like the idea of the pitch bending and detuning thing. Um, but again, uh, why can't I do this with a transformer in Logic in the com- in the computer? I suppose I. I would I would plug my MIDI guitar into the computer and then process it with that instead. So mm. I guess um, so. It, it, does it have CV and no, gain on it? Yeah. Well, this, this was the thing no, that I, it, what, no, unfortunately not. That's oh, the thing I think was missing. Analog. You get sixteen mono analogs and sort of harness them together I mean, and all like, that. Oh, interesting. It, yeah, it looks like a good idea for people that don't know how to plug things into their computer. Yeah, and it's a simple one box. Things through Logic and make loads of transformers and stuff, I guess. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Dave, you've got a lot of synths. <laughs> it's only 300 bucks, which actually <laughs> seems quite reasonable. You can never have too many. I can't. You'll have to stand up a little bit. Keyboards. Ah, I see. <laughs> Except I think, I'm, I think I'm reaching the end of this, uh, the accuracy of this statement. Uh, I thought it was quite neat, actually. There was a few things like the round robin thing, which is a bit like you know, like on the white ape voice, where it scrolls through each of the stems, uh, you know, with mm-hmm. a different note. I thought uh, there was some pretty neat things. Oh, uh, the it other was a long, long presentation. The other thing was the um, the, the the different levels of glide that you could, yeah. so you can create yeah. that kind of dreamy sort of multiple rate slide, which is nice. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, that's both those things are very kind of over high me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I thought it was neat. And it wasn't expensive either, was it? It's 300 like, bucks. It like? 300 yeah. bucks. It just I mean, seems, seems kind of. Cr- yeah, like but it say, is. Just, clever. It's clever. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, I concur. I mean, to because many of these things, you know, like the polychain mode and Dave Smith stuff and all of the, this is kind of essentially the what those things do, I suppose, in but in a kind of more uh, uh, dedicated format. What do you think, Rich? Well, not unlike Dave, the first thing I thought of when I saw this was the programmer module that came for the Oberheim 4 voice that made that reallocated voices to the modules in differing ways. And this actually emulates some of those same modes and probably does a bit more too. But the ability, this is like the dream device 
of about 1972 because it takes your modular rig and turns it into like a polyphonic rig. And back then, that's what everybody wanted. And and be able to take this enormous modular Moog I have here and just lay down a four-note chord and have it all play and sound wonderful. And this oh. would allow you to do that. So on some level, it's a dream device from 45 years ago. <laughs> um, but I still think it's incredibly useful, especially with the reemergence of people with their little modular rigs. And if somebody had four of, say, Oberheim's Eurorack modules and wanted to use them as a polyphonic synthesizer, this would facilitate doing that. So I think it's actually a really cool device and not too expensive and pretty nifty thought out product, even though it doesn't do anything terribly revolutionary. It's really cool. Yeah. Nice, nice kind of utility thing. So yeah, future retro, um, do check it out. 300 bucks. I think it's available now. Uh, oh, I've got some images here. Maybe we can see the back of it as well. Let's have a look just in case you were curious. Let's see. What does that do? Uh, yeah. So you've got outputs, uh, in outputs on the front and then there's a sort of mode switch for all the different uh ways that you can set it up and it does clever things like um you know you put it in a certain mode and then you press the first note the second note, and then it will just you know can define voices and routing it's just it just you know it's clever it's the sort of thing you could probably do with a raspberry pi and a bunch of midi interfaces but having that many if it did other things it would be really cool as well like maybe you could have a usb connection and use it as midi ports as well if you weren't if you're only using eight of them rather than all 16 you know that might make sense but i guess it's going to be the sort of thing that well, it looks like you could take this thing on the road yeah whereas you know a collection of raspberry pis uh, probably wouldn't travel as well no you're right that's true Anyway, that's that particular topic sorted. I guess uh, this might be a good time to uh, discuss our sponsors. In fact, I will now press the button for the ad, and it plays first time. Remarkable. Thanks to Isotope telling you about Trash 2, which is their uh, multi-faceted uh, dual-stage distortion system. Design your own unique distortions, massive and mild, uh, to everything in between, with band-limiting band distortion, so you can create a lot of other things, let your tracks inhabit any space with a Convolve module, 100 impulse re responses or Load your own. Find a new voice, make your audio speak with two redesigned filter modules, each requiring, each featuring new vowel, format filters, screaming peaks, node modulations, and more. You can trash your audio immediately with an extensive new preset library and an ear friendly limiter that lets you play without fear in case you were afraid. Because you might be very afraid with this sort of mangling going on. Anyway, what you could do is head over to Isotope, isotope.com forward slash trash, where, as with all of their things, you can get a 10-day uh, unlimited demo, uh, which I think just allows you not to save, if I recall, but do check it out. And, of course, um, we did run a competition last week where you were given the opportunity to win a copy of Trash, and we do have a winner. The winner this week is a chap called Chris K Keezer, um, I think you, that's how you spell it, K-E-Y-S-E-R. Uh, his Twitter handle is at Chris with a K underscore Keezer. And he said that new trash plugin from Isotope looks pretty sweet. Beyond Distortion, Trash 2 at Sonic State, that, which are all the prerequisites for winning and entering the competition in our uh, fantastically convoluted competition wiki winning um, picking system. Picked him out. So if you want to get in touch with us, Chris Keezer, uh, do let us know and uh, the Isotope Ferry will bestow trash two upon you but you can also win it yourself this week uh what you need to do is you need to get yourself onto twitter we need you to tweet the hashtag audio mangle that's one word i quite enjoyed that one audio mangle and the hashtag trash two which is the number two to at sonic state and at isotope inc and of course uh, feel free to fill up the other characters with anything you see fit because uh, we do like to hear from you and uh, i know that isotope do monitor it so if you want to win you need to be on Twitter, the hashtag Audio Mangle and the hashtag Trash2 to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. And we will pick a winner for next week where you could win Trash2. We'll say thank you very much to Isotope for sponsoring the show. Thank you very much. Right, um, next topic. Let's see where we are. Oh, uh, lost my mouse there for a second. Polymidi processor. Oh, yeah. What's this all about? This is curious. This is. I thought you might enjoy this. Of course, Mr. Rudess is the CTO. This is the X-Key Air, and it's completely wireless. It uses Bluetooth MIDI, and it rocks. There we go. I won't play the rest of it. That's a bit unkind. But this is the new uh, X-Key 
uh, from CME uh, Air, which uses Bluetooth MIDI and is a wireless free. It's got a rechargeable battery in it as well. So I think the whole thing can be done sort of without any wires, which is curious, really, because obviously the X key isn't exactly... Um, you know, it doesn't need a lot of wires, just needs one USB port. Although the X30, XQ37 does have a little dongle on the end that you can have MIDI in and out additionally and a couple of pedals. When in fact, I was using it in the, uh, in the review I recently did. But the thing that's really curious about this is that um, they actually went on... To, they did an X key. They did a, a key, an Indiegogo campaign, and they've raised, I think, as of today, forty six k, and they were only after ten and four hundred and sixty two percent funded. And it just seems a very curious thing. This this new tr trend to, I guess it's. Do you think it's all about pre orders, Rich? I mean, is it just a question of like, well, if we get them, mate, and then that's it? I mean, it, it makes sense to a degree, but it somehow seems cheating when a proper company does it and they they don't need funding, or you would imagine they wouldn't. But uh, this kind of looks cool. Have you got an X key? I don't. I just. I think I pointed this out last time. Uh, got one of these. Ah, yeah. Now that is nice. Keith too. McMillan devices, which I'm actually about to bring out on the road with me. Wow. Are well, you going to use it? Well, uh, currently in the execution of the new single of Chic, there are some samples required. Like I don't know if you'll be able to hear this, but and uh, this sort of thing. I don't know if you can hear that, yep, but, you know, that. synth sweeps. And then there's a few spoken things that have to be triggered. And uh, some of the gear that I rent provides this functionality on the gear, which is very convenient and wonderful. Reads it right off a of flash drive. But others of the gear that we occasionally are presented with don't. So in pursuit of being able to accommodate those moments, I've decided to bring this little... Q Nexus device on the road with my laptop and an Apogee One interface, and that's going to be my playback module for that. Ah, that's playing out of Ableton. Okay, well that sounds like a pretty good idea. Um, yeah, Dave. But to you, let me just so, get to your, oh, to yeah, your sorry, point about I'm sorry. the keyboard. To the to the keyboard, it all looks very cool to me, and I'm really looking. I'm you know the fact that it does polyphonic aftertouch means I really want to see how it feels. If, is it how spongy is it at the bottom of the key? Because quite honestly, the amount of times I need polyphonic aftertouch are far outweighed by the consistency of the key bottom to me. So um, I have to see how it feels. But it looks like a really cool product. They are pretty good. I mean, I have to say the X key stuff, you do require a little bit of adjustment to playing. It's not as, uh, or, you know, you have to set it up to be exactly how you want. Incidentally, um, just as an aside, uh, I discovered that the JDXA responds to polyphonic aftertouch, which is uh, quite uh, a, an unusual thing. And I thought that, so I'm guessing cool. they might have be able to introduce that, uh, is it MPE, multi, I forget what it's called now, but uh, but yeah. Cool. Uh, Robbie, Robbie. Yeah, well, I'm I'm a big fan of the X keys. I've got both of the, both the little one and the big one, which I take with my portal rig. But um, yeah, I thought it was strange that the, um, that they did a Kickstarter because, like you say, they they would seem to be a company who are who are kind of riding on a successful kind of back catalogue of products that people want. So you, it must be something more than trying to raise money. Publicity, uh, I guess. I suppose. Yeah, yeah, publicity. I mean, on on the on the on the whole thing of polyphonic aftertouch. Obviously, I said I mentioned that I mentioned a couple of weeks ago. I got a Roly Seaboard. Yeah. Yeah, so I've been, I've got the little three octave one, which is, which is great. And I've been, I've been having lots and lots of fun with that and um, kind of exploring the whole world of polyphonic aftertouch. And um, it really is, you know, for me, for what I'm doing with a lot of my projects, exciting, adding another kind of, kind of almost sort of really fluid, liquid, organic element to, to synth stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, and that obviously the the X keys has the has the polyphonic aftertouch as well. So um, it'd be a nice way of having some of that features when I'm out and about. But so I, th I think those, I think I, th I mean, I love the X keys, and I think they're going to do great. The 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 one with the Bluetooth definitely. Yeah, I don't know what the uh, what the final price is. Let's have a look. It looks like two three nine. So you get uh, the retail is two nine nine according to this. If you did it on Indiegogo, not Kickstarter, by the way, uh, then it would have been um, yeah, it would have been uh, two three nine. So a little bit less. Um, I don't know, I, I, Dave. Always room for another little sneaky keyboard in your rig. 
but you don't tend to your your system isn't really kind of designed to be portable i'm guessing <laughs> <laughs> be really good fun to take it out on the road wouldn't it i suspect it would last about half an hour that's just getting it down the stairs uh no, I don't know. I've never played any of their stuff, so I don't know. It was interesting what Robbie was saying, actually. But I mean, anything with poly aftertouch, for me, it's a thing of beauty. Yeah, it's not quite the same experience, perhaps, as uh, with with the Rolly Seaboard or a full travel key, because you've got a little more, you've got more time to sort of dig in and what have you. With in the X key, it's actually it does take a little bit of setting up, and the re-triggering is you know is a bit different. It's not a proper keyboard; it's a bunch of switches basically on a on a bed. Yeah. So it's not quite the same thing. But the whole notion. The Kickstarter thing's funny though, isn't it? I thought that was quite interesting. I was speaking to somebody the other day, and I was criticising some company who were doing a Kickstarter thing because in a way, it's got a bit dull now, and for me anyway and I was saying oh you know why don't they just put their money where their mouth is and this bloke looked at me like I was a complete idiot which I'm completely prepared to admit I am and kind of went who in their right mind would put their own money where their mouth is yeah That's the first rule of business put somebody else's money where your mouth is and I was like, which oh, I okay, guess is okay. the is the principle behind it yeah yeah I wonder I wonder interesting yeah. very interesting yeah Mark do you need a wi- sorry Mark do you need a wireless keyboard in your life no. <laughs> I'm guessing you it didn't look, invest It does look nice, though. It looks very nice. I mean, polyphonic after such is kind of wasted on me because I'd be lucky if I even switch monophonic after touch on. In fact, if in fact, if you want the truth, I'd probably switch the velocity off as well because I'm not consistent with any of those things. I'm a guitarist, so I can't, you know, keyboards and velocity and and all that 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 dynamic thing i'll paint it in afterwards if i need to um i kind of i wonder though about the um you know the 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 funding because if you think about it when somebody takes something to market they work out what they're going to make they do a profit and loss account and then they go to the bank and they talk to their bank manager and they say hey mr bank manager this is what we're making this is what we project uh, this is what we think we need from you and they borrow the money from the bank and they pay the bank uh, on commercial loans I don't, I don't know something like 15 percent above base rate isn't it or something I'm not so, sure what it is um, I know when I know when I used to borrow money it was like 18 percent it's probably a little bit less than that now because I think the base rate was about six then so so let's say they're paying 16 15 or 16 percent on their loan um, if if Indiegogo and Kickstarter are, ta- so let's say they're taking 10%, I've no idea what the real numbers are, but it could be more cost effective than going to the bank for a loan. Yep. And you don't go into manufacturing unless you're absolutely certain that your product's going to fly. So it's, I don't know, I think it's actually quite a good idea personally. And uh, as an alternative to going to banks, uh, you know, but, but they've got an existing is. line of products, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, they have. But it doesn't necessarily what... mean they've got the cash flow to 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 manufacture yeah. something new, does it? Well, no, but generally, what you do is you go to your distributors and you go, okay, so would you would you commit to a hundred of these or fifty of these or whatnot? Once you built up a picture of how uh, how many people are going to come on board, which if you've got a line, most of the people would. Could but yeah, I understand the over and above the bank. If you if you sell stuff to people and then you, are you not on thirty day invoicing or ninety day invoicing, so you don't get the money for so many days anyway. So you still got to go to the bank to borrow the money to put to pay the manufacturer because you you're not going to get the manufacturer to make it for nothing, are you? I mean, no. perhaps perhaps they're not as you know. I mean, I think CME they they used to have a much bigger product range, didn't they? They had all those master keyboards yeah. and stuff, and they had all sorts of peripheral products that they kind of bought in from other people and kind of rebranded. And it now looks like I don't know if CME X Key is the brand, and it's like a separate thing. So perhaps they're not right. as big an entity as you might assume. Yeah, that may I be. Still it. Think that, I still think all businesses have to borrow money for cash flow from time to time, yeah. and as an alternative to borrowing money, it might actually be a good way. Of getting cash flow moving and not expen- not as expensive as going to a bank, but I, I might be wrong, but that's just my kind of intuition on this is that this might be a better way of 
getting money than banking. Well, I, I, if I just chip in there, I mean, I suppose the thing is, you know, any way that people can raise money without involving the banks is going to be a good thing. But it's surely it's only going to be a matter of time before uh, Indiegogo, Kickstarter are just bought by banks and then they end up using that money, <laughs> and in, you know, in, in their financial systems and it all goes round again. But, it, you know, in principle, it's a great idea. Uh, it, it is. It does feel a bit wrong. I agree with you, Dave, that they're doing it. But in fact... You know, if you're ending up being, you know, hammered by everybody else, which is usually the case, you may as well take the advantage when you can. And, it, you know, maybe it's just a smart move. But um, just to answer a couple of questions in the chat room, yes, it's got Bluetooth. I'm guessing you're probably going to need iOS. Is it 8 and above to get the uh, Bluetooth MIDI or is it 7 and above? I forget which. Uh, that gives you the MIDI over Bluetooth capability and what have you. And then I guess you could bring that into your uh, into your computer and all those side of things as well. So, I mean, yes, uh, I personally don't find a, a great discomfort and difficulty by just having a single USB cable that's about the size of a, you know, a, a pair of headphones. To, but but I guess for some, this is going to work out nicely. But it's an interesting idea. And of course, it was just another excuse to be able to play something with Jordan Rudess being Jordan on it. But uh, And here's the, uh, in fact, I've got it here. I've got the box for the, the CME here. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, he's actually on the box. So Because he is now the, the CTO for... Um, uh, or Chief Whittler, perhaps, as uh, for 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 CME. I mean, in 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 his in his defence, I know everyone takes the piss. I mean, I'm obviously he's technically an amazing player, but when I was certainly looking at the Roly Seaboard, he's he's involved with Roly as well. Yeah, and um, the the kind of sort of master classes he showed online of how to use the Seaboard. I mean, he he is amazing at taking alternative input devices and really working out how to you know get a technique that is really impressive yeah he's, he's very 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 clever at doing all that yeah. and making you think i could aspire to playing not prog rock lines but i could aspire to mastering this instrument maybe kind of nearly on a par with somebody like that well just coming back to the seaboard that you're using i mean you say that yeah. I mean, the, the, some of the most impressive demos are the things that require X and Y uh, stuff, you know, like sort of um, uh, acoustic samples or model things that have uh, expression that is very, yeah. very difficult to do without maybe a breath controller, but also you've got it per note. I mean, have you found that you've been, had to adapt your playing? I mean, because obviously the oh, seaboard yeah, is... It's, it's nothing like playing a keyboard. I mean, I mean, I guess compared to the continuum, which is just a flat piece of neoprene, the fact that there's a chromatic keyboard at least gives you a geography to start from. Yeah. But you have to play very precisely. Um, otherwise, as I described it to someone the other day, it just sounds like inputting keyboard parts that sound like a sick cow. Because every <laughs> everything goes, oh. is <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you have to, you know, you have I like to. That. It's definitely, a, it's definitely a, you know, an acquired skill, and you, and you have to put the effort in. But right. I mean, after a few days of working with it, I've already, I'm already kind of getting a few little techniques of my own to kind of, you know, get stuff out of it. And, and I'm, I'm really liking the fact that it's a, it's, it's a new instrument to kind of master. You know, it isn't just like plonking away on a keyboard. It's like something new as a challenge to kind of incorporate into the workflow. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how, how, much you, is, uh, how much is the little one, Robbie? Uh, fifteen hundred pounds. Wow. Okay. And it's and it should be said it's absolutely you cannot believe an instrument built better. It's like an unbelievable piece of craftsmanship. Ah, it's like okay. a solid piece of aluminium. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah. Has yours and got it, has yours got the built-in synth engine yeah. as well? Yeah. So it's got so you've got Equator, which is their synth engine. Which you can put samples in as well as you know do normal additive synthesis and um, subtractive synthesis and um, yeah then you can load sounds from the equator engine that go into the DSP on board so you can then just unplug it and use it with its own outputs with those sounds so you can use it as its own entity. Can you plug um, a MIDI? And, can you plug an external MIDI source into it to have a, a normal keyboard play it as well? Don't know about that. So it's only got a USB out on it. Right. But it's um, but the, it's really elegant. Their Equator engine, it's really nice. Yeah, we and saw. I, think, I saw uh, it at uh, at Nam or Meso when I talked to. Yeah. Is it Roland Lamb? Is he the? Is he that's the, right. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, yeah. So I, I mean, I and it's it's built in London. I mean, they literally you put in an order and then a couple of people spend a few days in their office in London building it right. for you. I mean, you know, it's uh, it's it's like a really nice. It's like like buying a nice guitar or something. It's a really 
really quality product. Mm. So you know, I'm you know, I'm pleased to be supporting British. Yeah, well, that's fair enough. Mark, you had uh, mm. a comment there. Sorry, I was just going to say I've been experimenting with that sick cow sound because what I've worked out is instead of <laughs> tuning my voice to make my uh, myself in tune, uh, when I sing, I can sing up to half a semitone either side of the note i'm meant to be singing what i've started doing is i've started writing music where i've put lfos on all of the pitches of things so it's all and i experimented with a track like that and it actually sounds like i sing really well in tune when everything's moving by comparison (laughs) i just i was sort of trying to invent a new kind of music i'm not quite sure what it would be called like I think, I think I need one of those, it's a bit like dubstep, but everything's constantly wobbling. You know? I think I need one of those new sets of headphones that changes the way I hear life to hear that song. <laughs> That's a great idea, Mark. Yeah, is that, is that the concept we used to talk about when you're trying to pull pull a lady when you're single and you always you you go out with people your friends who are lesser good looking than you. <laughs> you seem like. <laughs> That's a that's a, a great comparison there. Uh, okay, well, but you could check it out. I'm I'm not sure when these are going to be shipping. Let's have a look. It says uh, November, so uh, yeah, it looks like. And there's still there are still um, uh, 97 of those available. You can get uh, yeah. So they've they've got you can spend as much as uh, well two grand. I'm not quite sure what you fought. You get five of them for two grand. That's dollars. Anyway, um, a, a development that, that certainly I think we're probably going to see more of. Right, what's next? Ah, this is the uh, connect audio. I think I have a video for this, or maybe I don't. It doesn't seem that I do. Maybe I can... Uh, um... There is one. There is one. Ah, yes, this is Chris Stax, uh, who's, who used to work at Moog, uh, and now uh, he does some really, really lovely electronic music. This, I'll let this play for a bit and stop talking. So this is uh, just uh, the music with him just showing how he's integrated uh, iOS devices into the uh, iConnect MIDI, iConnect Audio 4 Plus, plus also it's got an audio fit interface built in. And this has been a long time coming. I know that we've uh, we've we, we've covered the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus and the original, which are really utilitarian things if you've got a specific use for them. I'll start with you, Robbie, because I mean you've yeah. you've integrated the iConnect stuff in. I mean, does the audio yeah. interface? I guess you've already got you know what you need probably in, in terms of I.O., but it looks like this has a, a great way to bring it all together into one unit, right? Yeah, I think that. I mean, it, I mean, yeah, you're right. It's, I mean, it's elegant, isn't it? If you, if, you want, if you want to use the iPad and integrate it in in many different ways in the studio or, you know, multiple devices, then, I mean, and, you have, and you're in the market for an audio interface, I think this is great. And also, I think this looks great, perhaps, if you want to use, like, iPad um, for virtual instruments and stuff live. Yeah, um, and you oh, want to integrate point, it with it? A, you want to integrate it with another system like Ableton as well. I mean, I think this could be a really good good device for taking out live because it's got it's got a few ins and outs. It's, you know, it's more than just stereo, isn't it? It's four in and out. Is Let's it? have a look uh, what it's got specifications. It's got uh, four out inputs. Ah, four inputs and how many outputs? Let's have a look. Specifications four. Is it four as four well? Physical, yeah. Four physical four physical outputs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess that people other... are going to be a bit, a bit, people are going to be a bit sceptical, aren't they? Because it's like a company with no audio experience suddenly coming in. So there's going to be all the all the usual stuff of people being very cynical about how good quality the preamps are and all that stuff. But I mean, certainly from my experience, right the, with, with certainly yeah, certainly from my experience with the two plus and the four plus, I mean, they make quality products, albeit that they sometimes take eons to come out. But I guess that just shows they're getting them right. Hopefully. But, I mean, certainly the 4 Plus has been flawless in the studio. Yeah, I'm just seeing if I can see what the... It doesn't say what the uh, wh- whether it uses Sirius or one of the other other ones. I don't know, this looks like a pretty cool thing. I mean, I don't know if you use any of your iOS devices as sources as well, but pulling it, certainly in a small setup where you've just got... You want to plug various things in, this could be pretty useful in the, in the studio, like, you know, like yours, for instance. Um, it could be very useful. They've missed something really important off for me. I buy it. I would definitely buy it if it had one feature that is missing for me. And and that is um, 
I've, I've integrated this Focusrite DSP24 into my setup, and then that means I've started using the VRM box thing. Right. Uh, which is what Gaz... Yeah, uh, it's the monitoring, um, the monitoring DSP. But then there's stuff. the other... I've, so I've got two VRM solutions. One of them's a USB device, and the other one's a, a FireWire device. Now, what's missing from this box is a digital output. If it had a Sony Philips digital output, I could plug that into one of my VRM things, and I'd still have VRM. I'm going to have to keep uh, two audio interfaces if I want to do that VRM thing. Um, I, and I don't understand the 29 routable MIDI ports either. Um, um, I think there's network. Well, I, I actually, having said that, though, Mark, surely because it's got a USB host port, couldn't you just plug the VRM box into one of the USB host uh, and, and run that as a separate audio device that hangs off the back of it? That might be possible. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, then maybe I should buy one. Yeah, that might work. I mean, I, I, I would want to hear the microphone inputs. I mean, yeah, they look really good on paper. But and, you never and, know, do you? Uh, yeah, 110 dB signal to noise. That sounds all right. Um, but, you know, when when you actually uh, listen to them, whether they've got a nice kind of sound yeah. to them or not, or and whether that noise is really as quiet as it seems. Because if you stick 60 decibels of gain on, which is also got in 1 dB steps, 60 decibels of gain theoretically should only give me a what is it 50 decibel noise floor or something but it's i don't know yeah no practice, that's a very that good point I, good that's a good point rich i noticed you were nodding there uh, this but but i mean something for a portable setup i mean you know this could be pretty cool yeah i know you take your this, aperture around the place but this product is absolutely brilliant and points the yeah. way for what other con companies are going to be doing probably a little bit better than this in the very very near future but given what it does how much it costs and what it weighs and the big how big it is yeah. it's absolutely groundbreaking to me and i was so impressed with how clever it is to me the biggest thing that's wrong with it um although i agree with mark that having a digital output would have been great is putting the headphone jack on the back yeah, that's perhaps a little bit of an oversight. That's oh, a it? wacky design decision. Yeah, that's a wacky design decision. It's right next to the four analog uh, balanced outputs, and it's just a stupid oh, yeah. place to put a headphone. There output. it is. But other than that, I think this is an absolutely brilliant product concept. They nailed it on a conceptual level. On a practical level, they did pretty darn well, and it does a lot of really cool stuff for, like, I think $300 street yeah, price. Yeah, 300 bucks. Whereas the only competing device in that size range, which I actually own one of, is a Motu uh, Ultra uh, Ultralight uh, Mark III, which is a half rack space, costs about 500 bucks, and has a whole ton of inputs and outputs, a lot more than this thing does. But it doesn't do the computer interfacing tricks, and it doesn't do the iOS integration. And this is a real, uh, you'll watch, I guarantee you in the next year and a half, you're going to see a dozen products like this yeah, from I mean, every the, single major manufacturer. I, I I thought they had a. Pay I thought that this the the direct connection stuff, you know, between you know your iOS directly in, you know, farm factory into your door and all that. That's all their own proprietary thing, isn't it? I think it might. So be. I, don't, I don't know whether other people can jump on that bandwagon. Whether they've kind of cornered that. Yeah, that's a well, good they point. Will. Yeah, I'm They'll sure just someone will figure out. Or are into it. There, as a product concept, this thing is so strong that everybody's going to want to build one. Yeah, because nobody's. I mean, it's fair to say the iConnect two and the two, four plus have been out for probably nearly getting on for two years now, and nobody's nobody else has integrated that that kind of connectivity. Have no, they there's software doing it, no. isn't there? There's, there's various bits of software that. Will uh, yes, there's uh, iOS stuff. That's true. But iOS. That's, yeah, that's very true. Mac. Fair enough, Ray. I've okay. gone back to thinking about this hosting the VRM box as well. It wouldn't do it because it, oh, the VRM box is kind of class compliant, but it needs the software to create the right. DSP that creates the illusion of you listening through speakers, and there would be no way of running that in there. Yeah, well. Oh, well, that's a shame. I know, Dave, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I mean, I'm guessing, you know, you've got, you're an RME guy, haven't you? You've got like, you know, because you've got a ton of inputs and outputs that you need there with all of that uh, vintage electronics about the place. But say if you had a B studio or a smaller setup, this could, this could be very uh, cool. Uh, it's the first time that I've thought, oh, doing iPad stuff might be cool. Simply yeah. because of the connectivity. That's why, exactly. know, that's what I've been. Uh, yeah. opposed to 
that's what's yeah. held held us back what certainly held me back in terms of enthusiasm because it's like but this is the first sign of everything starting to come together yeah me, well like, i mean you Ooh. could do it with the iConnect 2 plus i mean we did do that but it, it the thing about the iConnect 2 uh, plus at uh, the midi one I mean, it's got, you know, you've got Ethernet and you've got all these other... Th th I don't think this has... No, it doesn't look like it's got uh, an Ethernet port, so you can't network the MIDI, which is a shame because that's actually a really useful extra feature. I'm guessing Motu can't be far behind because they're using the... Uh, is it the AV? I can't remember what the name of the, the standard is. So they must be getting there. So there's just obviously two different routes going there. And if I guess you're right, Rich. If Motu crack it, then they've got much more marketing clout. Because I know... I mean, this. I remember seeing mock-ups of this not this year, but last year at NAM, you know, so, and I know uh, when I've been speaking to the team there, because I've been desperately trying to get marketing dollars out of them for, uh, for, pro, for you know, for, it, for years, it seems like, there's been such a lot of time and development going into research. It has taken perhaps a lot longer than it initially did, but now it's out there. This is, the, you know, this, this is the moment. I mean, I guess if they'd done this, if it had come out maybe six months ago, then, you know, maybe the maybe they, they would have even more advantage but it's it, it's not a household name i guess that's the pro part of the problem so that you know I, I guess maybe something like this might help but the idea that if we look again at the image at the image there's two uh, usb ports so you can connect two computers to it and i think that means that you can merge the streams and have it i mean in many ways it's very similar to i can't remember the name of that um copperland kind of midi standard where it becomes just a device with a bunch of inputs and a bunch of outputs on the connectivity network and that maybe is where it becomes interesting rich well mm. they showed us they showed a screen with a huge matrix where you could create your own custom routings within the device in software it was that really exactly. impressive it That's was the, really impressive it's the, it's the same on the midi 2 plus um, yeah and the 4 plus yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, four plus. But, but I guess I'm just jumping on the bandwagon here. Well, no, not realize. that. No, it's not that. It's. It, I think the thing is that makes this different is it's actually an audio interface as well, whereas that was more mm. of a MIDI interface, which just somehow merged cleverly all the USB stuff. And I know Gaz, if Gaz was here, he'd be quite excited by this because, as we've been talking about, MIDI host mode, MIDI host mode, MIDI host. Uh, sorry, USB host mode is the future. I mean, we've seen it with the Roland uh, Ira. I can't remember the name of the mixer. Um, MX1, isn't it? I think it is. And that, you know, that's not class compliant, but imagine if that was, you know, that would be the one, you know, that would give you a reason to maybe buy an IRA product when in fact you hadn't considered one in the past. And uh, maybe they were just, uh, and uh, from what I've spoken to Roller, they haven't, you know, done that. Yes, you could just plug an iPad into it. And that's that's a shame because there's, there, as I've probably banged on about before, that's the real turning point as well. I mean, that could be a real big, a real biggie. Um, okay, right. Well, it's two nine nine. I, I believe it must be available now because they're pushing it. Um, uh, which does I know? I, I guess that's going to probably translate to three hundred quid, isn't it, or two hundred and four, two four nine, possibly because of all the import and what have you. So, I don't know when the availability is. You know, I mean, they they quite often say it's here, but then you know they've got to wait for the boat to arrive because they obviously get a, a lot of these things built and they come over in mass and then they start going into the channels but well worth i will try and see if we can get one in for review because i would like to check it out and it might be something that can be you because i have been using the um behringer uh, x air which has been great just for throwing synths into and then just recording the output which is um, mark one of the reasons you 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 were given all of that splurge that i sent you of uh, oh, right. just a bunch okay. of stuff because it was just oh that's really easy to record so i did record it so so there we go um it feels like this is probably quite a good time to uh, maybe uh wrap things up i know we've got a couple of topics that uh, perhaps they'll keep till next time but it feels like a good time i think for many the stream seems to have held up i don't know how many people we've had on it but i will check the stats later because i now actually get stats which is fantastic so i hope it's been all right for you all um and for for now i think we'll probably uh call it a day although uh, robbie that one thing that i did i'll, I'll play out because you spotted that uh uh, Kilpatrick Audio Phenol doing a bit of uh, demonstration stuff, which looked really nice. Very um, Buchla esque, I thought. Yeah, yeah. but I'm still I'm still teetering on wanting to get one of those for my little portable studio rig. Yeah, that that and an iConnect uh, Audio Four Plus, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got the, I've got the Apollo twins. So can, ah, yeah, you know. that's hard to beat. Anyway, well, thank you very much for joining us, Robbie, and thanks for sending that in. Yeah, and uh, cool. uh, it's been a pleasure having you. Of course, you can find Robbie Bronderman's music. I don't know if you're doing any uh, Sushi Friday stuff at the moment, or whether you're We're talking about it. We've actually got. I've actually got another little secret project that I'm just about to do with Gaz, um, and um, and then also a, a really exciting album project which I'm about to start as well. So, lots of stuff going on. Excellent. Well, uh, congratulations, and I hope your summer is uh, 
nice and easy and your travel arrangements uh, may may they remain simple and uncomplicated in the uh, and some sort of strange uh, saying that I've wanted to introduce uh, yeah. Right, and Dave Spears, thank you very much for joining us too from G4 Software. Anything coming up from you guys that you want to tell us about? We haven't heard from you for ages. Just you on the show, not G4 Software, I mean. Oh, oh uh, actually, I should give a shout out. Ableton, amazing company. So when they introduced 9.2 in the 64 bit stuff, all our stuff worked great. On the 32 bit, Imp2 was causing issues, and I know they had a load of issues with uh, a load of plug-in instruments so uh, we spoke to them and there is a beta that fixes it very soon how many companies would do that even for an old 32-bit post that's pretty cool yeah well good shout out i think credit where credit's due definitely anyway thank you very much for joining us dave it's been a pleasure to have you and um and i hope to see you soon thanks and, of course, Rich Hilton over there in Connecticut, where I expect your limous- limousine or perhaps small aircraft, light aircraft, is whisk- ready to whisk you away to your next uh, high high session somewhere. Uh, thank you very much for I- joining us, Rich. Actually, tomorrow morning we'll be flying to Colorado, where we're playing on Friday and then back on Saturday. Oh, you re- is, that, uh, is it Red Rock? Is that the one? You're not playing there, are you? No, we're playing not this time. We are playing there in uh, either late September or early October with Duran Duran. But, uh, no, this time we're playing a jazz festival in Aspen as the headliner for a one-night show. Great. Well, have a lovely time. And thank you very much for thank joining you. us, Rich. It's been a pleasure. Always great. Thank you. And also, Mr. Mark Tinley, thank you for your late edition and for your input today. Thank you very much. And um, shall we uh, encourage people to join us on Splice and let us know what their usernames is and see if they want to uh, yeah, sort absolutely. out that mess we've been making? <laughs> well, actually... Oh, we just we need someone expert arranger, somebody that's good at telling a story and knows how to do the beginning, the middle, and the end, and how to um, how to get from you know one mood to another mood and to to take all of the things that we've done and put them into a nice kind of a. I, I think it should be. It's got to be an album length, hasn't it? I reckon. I'd imagine. Yeah. It needs to be like a, a kind of a a, a fifty minute mm-hmm. arrangement. Well, massive meandering. Spe- I, I will point out now it is actually in three four, uh, so it's a little bit unusual and it's very very slow. But uh, I won't. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, um, send us your splice, uh, and we'll invite you, and you can have a mess around with it. Anyway, yep. um, thank Thanks you very much, Mark. Anyway, You're th- very again. welcome. So that's it for this week. I said I'd play out with a bit of Kilpatrick Phenol, and I will. So thank you very much for watching. Oh yes, don't forget if you want to enter the. Uh, the isotope competition, uh, just a quick last minute there. Um, you want to send the hashtag audio mangle and the hash- hashtag trash2, both single words, to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc., where you could win a copy of Isotope Trash2. We thank them very much for their sponsor of the show. That's it for this week. And I think if I press this button, it will probably work. Let's see what happens. Ah, there we are.